So you did what a good data person would do. You searched how to process big data and that landed you into a sea of Apache Spark tutorials. You are seeing words like lazy execution, clustering, RDDs, partitioning, and then you're more confused after you started than you were before it. 2026 is just around the corner and now is the perfect time to master Spark if you have not already. So let's be clear why you need to learn Spark as a data engineer or a data scientist. Let's say you have a 50 GB CSV file and now you want to join it with another 25 GB of file. You love pandas, you love Python, and you try to do it in pandas within your own laptop, which has like, what, 16 GB of memory? The one file, 50 GB itself, cannot be fitted into that. Forget about joining. And I have personally worked with files where I've seen within a single data set, there's more than terabytes of data. So how do you even do that? That's where Spark enters. It is the undisputed king of big data processing. And as per the job market also, it's not optional. Did you know? that thousands of companies, including 80% of Fortune 500, use Spark. A 2024 analysis of data engineer job posting found that Spark was the single most in-demand big data technology mentioned in 41.1% of all jobs. And that demand is projected to grow 33% annually from now to 2030. Hi everyone, as you know, I'm Josh and I have about six plus years of experience working in different companies like ZS, DoorDash and Google. And to be honest, in all of those companies that I've worked at, Spark is used literally every day to process petabytes of data. Today, I'm going to show you the exact plan that I would have used if I wanted to learn Spark from scratch. Wait, before we start, I have to give you a critical warning. Spark is not a first step technology that you learn. It's probably step two or step three, because there are a couple of things that you have to learn, at least the basics before you jump into Spark. Number one is Python. You need to be comfortable with basic data structures, writing functions, or writing down some core programming logic into Python. Second is SQL. You need to understand how select, from, where, group, by, joins, all of these things work. And the good news is, I have a couple of videos on my channel that will help you get started. Trying to learn Spark before you've learned Python and SQL is like trying to be a pilot before you even had your driver's license for your car. Then you might be asking, what about Hadoop? Because a lot of people say that, okay, you have to learn Hive and Hadoop before you start with Spark. Okay, here's my take on this. And you may think that this is controversial, but it is what it is. You do not need to learn Hadoop if you want to get started with Spark. Here's why. Because Spark is built on similar foundations. It is still built on MapReduce. The main difference is Hadoop did it on disk. Let's say your SSDs versus Spark is doing it on your memory and only falling back to disk when the data is full. You will anyway understand all of these things in the courses that I recommend. Like, okay, what's the basic Hadoop architecture? What was the gap in it and why Spark came to fill the gap? And that's it. That's all what you need to know. You don't need to know Hadoop and Hive from scratch. If you are taking those courses, you're simply wasting your time because this is not 2015 anymore. Step one is choose your free workshop. So the number one reason why people quit learning Spark, at least in the initial stages, is because of the setup. Spark setup is a headache. Um, you have to set your Java libraries, you have to set your Spark home, you have to set all of your dependencies, even Hadoop dependencies and Hive dependencies or data catalog dependencies. It's a nightmare. So what do you do? This is the real deal. Databricks is the company founded by the creators of Spark. Their community edition gives you free limited use cluster. The reason I used quotes here is because they call it a cluster, but it's a single node cluster, at least in the free edition. But it's the exact notebook interface that thousands of companies pay for. Step two is learning the core concepts. This is where a lot of people get lost because they try to memorize everything there is about Spark APIs. Here are the key concepts that you need to get. One is distributed computing. The basic idea is how does Spark split a giant 100 GB file across 10 different computers to work on it with parallel. It might include topics like what are worker nodes versus what are driver nodes. Uh, how does a resource manager distribute the work? How does uh, the caching and the memory and core work for each of the different nodes? And how do these nodes communicate with each other? Lazy execution. Now, this is one of the most important concepts about Spark. The thing is, you can write like 100 lines of code and Spark will do nothing until you tell Spark engine to give you the final answer or write that final answer. And to understand it better, you need to understand two concepts, transformations and actions. Transformations are like select, filter, group by, which are lazy. They just build a plan of what you would like to do. Actions are like show, count, write, which are eager 
uh, operations. They tell Spark that, okay, execute that plan that you built now. Next is the Data Frame API. You need to understand five to six key operations that are used in Spark the most. And then Spark SQL. So it's like a higher level of abstraction, but it makes coding much easier if you are very familiar with SQL. So how do you get started with this? Just go to sparkbyexamples.com and only cover the basics that I mentioned in this video. And until you reach that point where you feel comfortable with the basics, that's when you stop with that website and go to the next step. You know, if there's one advice that I could give to somebody who is learning Spark is don't watch random videos of Spark from one creator versus the next creator or one educator versus the next educator because it's all random. It's going to be so difficult for you to pull all of these things in one pieces and create a unified roadmap in your brain. You should ideally follow a guided path. Here's what worked for me. It is big data with PySpark track on Datacamp, which is a perfect launch pad. Like I've been using Datacamp for years and I've also been vocal about it on my channel. And what makes it stand out is how hands-on it is. It's not just videos. You're writing real PySpark code every step of the way. Filtering, joining, aggregating data all inside a browser. No setup, no hassle. I just explain why setting up Spark is a headache and maintaining it is even a bigger one. The track is structured step-by-step. Step. You need to start with introduction of PySpark and then hit big data fundamentals cleaning data with PySpark and then all the way to feature engineering. You'll even deep dive into machine learning with PySpark and apply your skills with multiple hands-on projects like let's say building recommendation engines to tie everything together. If you are really serious about learning PySpark to land a DE job and check out the link in description to get started on Datacamp. Now when you go through this make sure that you code things yourself. There are a lot of DIY projects and your focus should be 200% on architecture because the thing is Unlike DSA and SQL interviews, Spark interviews are actually not coding based. And that's what brings me to my next section. How do you prepare for interviews? Common questions may include, okay, my workload size is this terabytes or this petabytes. What Spark configuration should I use? When you submit a job in Spark, what happens in the backend? Um, what are different partitioning strategies that you use? So all of these things are architecture driven questions. Spark is also generally a part of system design round instead of having a dedicated coding round. I've gone through and successfully cleared Databricks interview loop as well. But because Databricks is such a Spark heavy company, well, that was an exception where I saw like three different rounds specifically on Spark, which was crazy. But in 99% of companies, you will not have a dedicated Spark round even if they do, the questions will be around architecture, troubleshooting, logging, and in most of the time, it will be part of your system design round. So I'm going to give you a couple of links in the description that you can use if you want to get started with common interview questions of Spark. And that brings me to my final topic, real scale hands-on projects. Because if you learn Spark, and then you're if you're working with like 500 MB or 1, 2 GB of data sets, that's not going to be helpful because that's not what spark is used for you will not understand the complexities that you have to learn with spark unless you work with a bigger data set in this section i'm going to share with you some data sets and some projects that you can use which are truly large scale data applications that you can build on spark go to kaggle and find a data set at least over five gigabytes or use the free data sets which are built into the databricks they have plenty you can see all of these things next thing is you pick a project okay now pick something that you're interested in if you're interested in e-commerce then get the amazon reviews data set use spark to find the top 10 products of each category that have the highest average rating this forces you to use concepts like read filter group by aggregates join everything if you're interested in transportation new york city cab data is a popular large data set directly available on databricks unity tables one example business question can be what are the most profitable taxi routes next i would also recommend you to check this real world scale and complexity projects which can make you super confident check out these list of projects here now let me share a couple of more projects that you can take inspirations from use apache spark to analyze wikipedia data and then databricks developer relations sample projects along with different tech talks okay so that's it that's the plan the goal should be you should understand all of the spark concepts so well that you can explain it easily to your friend who doesn't know spark in layman terms and when you reach that level, you will easily be able to clear all the interviews. Companies don't pay you to know Spark syntax. Stack Overflow does that. Your LLM models do that. They know all the syntax. They pay you because you know how to solve big data problems. If you found this video useful, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And feel free to drop your thoughts in the comment section or even your questions. I try to answer most of them as much as possible. And that's it from my side. See you next time.